I call Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Chair. Well, Mr Chair, I think everything that the Minister's just said right now is actually confirmed why Labor is actually opposing this bill and has some fundamental problems with it. And I, what I didn't hear the Minister say was to, to address what, is, what lies behind his SOPs on part one tonight and what is the, the rationale for them and what is he trying to achieve. And, and I'm hoping during the debate tonight that we're actually going to hear a bit about that because when you put an SOP on the table and you, you expect it to be taken seriously, then you should be able to get up and talk to, uh, to what its purpose is and what, how it's going to enhance the bill, this bill which we see as being fundamentally flawed and, and, and try and give us an explanation as to whether it improves it in some way. Um, Mr Chair, our fundamental problem with this bill, um, and, and can I say, and I think I said it in the second reading, that when we, when we went into this process, it seemed like a reasonably straightforward um, bill. It was a, uh, had gone through a process of review. Um, we didn't, you know, we weren't, we weren't expecting there to be controversy around it, but every single professional body that came before us in the select committee, and I didn't hear the minister refer to any of them in his um, in his speech just now, um, had had some serious issues with this, and the serious issues were around the checks, the lack of checks and balances uh, within the bill by taking it, removing the standards um, authority and making it. Uh, absorbing it into the great white, the great whale of MB, um, absorbing it into a into a big government department, and uh, its checks and balances, and uh, the watering down of standards, the potential for watering down of standards rather than the strengthening of standards, and you know, and and we could talk until the cows come home about the lowering of standards generally by this government, but. What they're attempting to do here is fundamentally driven by the attempt to save money. And, uh, and, and that is, that is uh, one of our major problems with the bill. The minister admitted it himself when he just got up. Um, and, he ref and he read from the departmental, directly from the departmental report about what it said in the, re in the regulatory impact statement um, to this bill um, at... Uh, clause 22, under problem definition, which is what my colleague um, David Clark was referring to, what was the problem that was being tried to fix? Um, the, 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 the main issues were that the Standards Council is not financially sustainable over the medium to longer term. Now, when you, and, and we don't have an issue with that as being, as being a problem, <coughs> but the, the, the way to fix it was to look at how to strengthen it, strengthen the body, and to strengthen and to ensure that there were checks and balances, rather than to absorb it into a, into a, into a great big government agency, which uh, has its own problems, and where there are lots of questions about, around decisions that are being made. These, this is a fundamentally important uh, role that has that gives that that le goes to our international reputation. It goes to our ability to. Uh, to maintain our credibility in, across industries. Industries is like electrical uh, engineering, industries building and construction, the, the buildings that, um, you know, we're, we're, that could be affected by major events. We have to be able to stand up to scrutiny, international scrutiny on these things, on water safety, on a whole lot of other issues that where there was a troop of of submitters that came before the select committee gave very, very strong, credible in, uh, evidence as to why they had serious issues with the, the direction that the, that the government was taking with this piece of legislation. And we sat there and thought, well, we, you know, th they've got a point. And unfortunately, despite our concerns, despite the, um, the over and over again, the concerns that were raised um, around this, um, they fell on deaf ears, and, um, and, and it, which goes back to you know, what was the intention? What was the real intention behind this legislation? Was it to try and uh, ensure that there was a strong, credible body that was independent, and you talk about independence. You know, the the member over there got up and talked about, oh, the you know the fabulous independence. Well, checks and balances with, within a, a government agency 
um, uh, when you absorb a, an entity like that. Mr Chair. A call clear, Kevin. Thank you. Um, there are significant issues that have not been addressed, and, and those checks and you know, our, where our big concern is that we are going to see a watering uh, down of standards, a lowering of standards, and uh, and and uh, the question around whether or not the standards that are being developed are standards that are being developed according to an agenda, rather than than uh, being driven by the entity by the by the entity itself, and. I'd like to hear the Minister get up and, and say whether his SOPs in Part 1 um, on Clause 10 and Clause 13 are relevant to that argument and whether they are going to strengthen those checks and balances and if so, how. Uh, in, um, in the regulatory impact statement, the, um, the concern was raised that, uh, that and it was said that um, that the, um, some stakeholders have, ind have indicated that risk, the risk that experts may longer be willing to participate on standards development committees, given their perception that the independence of standards will be eroded under the proposed changes. We consider experts will continue to have incentives to participate. However, the actual impact is uncertain. And that that, what, that was produced before we had the submitters, before we had the stream of submitters before the committee. And when they did come before the committee, um, we were still unsure as to what, uh, how, wh whether those independent experts, whether they would still continue to have incentives to participate, how they would feel about, um, about continuing to participate and whether or not, um, and what those impacts are going to be. And, uh, you know, if you are um, if you are proposing to create a new entity within a um, within a government agency, then there's got to be a really careful process gone through in doing that, and you need to take the um, the stakeholders with you. And unfortunately, in this process, that hasn't happened, uh, and we've ended up with a situation where the government's pushing this legislation forward. It seems to be largely driven by a desire to, um, to cut costs. We've got concerns around independence. Um, we've got concerns around the probity, uh, around, the, um, uh, around how the, those standards, whether or not there's going to be, and, and also what, what kind of um, review mechanism there's going to be as to whether, whether or not the, this new system is actually going to be working. And I wouldn't mind the, the minister answering that question as well. How, how is there built, what is built into the legislation around um, providing a review to show that the, 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 the legislation is working as they say it is intended, rather than um, as, as is, um, is expressed by the concerns of those who submit it. And, and so therefore, um, uh, Mr Chair, um, Labor can't continue to uh, can't support this bill. Um, uh, we we're, we're at a loss as to what uh, added value the amendments are going, the SOPs are going to add. I'd like we'd like to hear from the minister on that, and uh, and you know we look forward to to hearing his explanation. I call Stuart now.